Well, welcome to today's program. I'm pleased to welcome to the show, Rick Simon, who's, who's the president and CEO of United Service Companies. Hello, Rick, how are you today? Great, good to be with you, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Have you already been to the golf course today? No, but I was hard at work when the sun was coming up. <laughs> you guys yeah. keep me busy. I bet, I bet, the busy, busy um, professional that you are. Tell us a little bit about United Service Companies. Uh, by that word companies, does that mean there's more than one? There is. United Service Companies is comprised of five different operating companies, an aviation company, a trade show cleaning company, a traditional cleaning company, a staffing company, and a security company. Now I see why you don't have time for golf. Yeah, I'm terrible at it anyway, so I don't play. Well, I am too, but it's still fun. Well, today we're going to talk about GVAC Star Service Accreditation, which uh, your company has obtained as reached that status. Why did you decide to go for the GVAC Star Service Accreditation in the first place? Infectious disease. Now, why did we, why did I get involved with it? It's pretty simple. We have a number of brand name customers, you know, names that you see every day in the trade show industry and in the hotel industry, all the big flags. And it'd be one thing for me to go to them and say, hey, Rick says it's really clean here today. And Rick says it's safe. And then they'll believe it because uh, we have great relationships with them. But I think it's even better that we have an independent third party with world class scientists that will create the protocols for us to follow to make people safe. And then as the, this, these programs get known, GBAC and the GBAC star, and they see the GBAC star, for instance, every Hyatt hotel in the world now, and thousands of other locations. People take that to feel safe. So for us, it was something we had to do. Yeah, a lot of people feel that way. So, um, you know, the GBAC star service accreditation is based on the facility accreditation program. There's some 20 elements there to review and implement in your company. Any of those stand out as noteworthy that you'd like to mention? Um, the biggest thing is the recurring training. Training, training, training. Even though we do it every day, I think it's always nice to retrain the people. Um, and the, the other thing is uh, things change. Uh, you know, we know when this started that everybody was, we had uh, disinfected. We have people wiping everything that's not moving. If you go to one of our properties and you're not moving, somebody's going to spray you and wipe you. Um, and they've got these yellow shirts on that say disinfection team, and it looks great. I think, again, with this training, we may go a little less on the wiping going forward and a little less on the overnight electrostatic spraying and a little more on the air purification. Not to say that those others are going to disappear totally. Um, one of them might, but that's a work in progress. And that's really another important part about the GBAC and the GBAC stars is that we work with these people. It's, this is not just, we filled out the paperwork. They said, oh, great. We'll see you later. Talk to us in a year. You know, it's an ongoing relationship with these professionals in an infectious disease. And I think that's really important. Yeah. Things are always shifting. It seems and we need to move with what's right to do at the time. I, I think that's the idea on it. How do the respective risk assessments for these facilities and your customers vary and how do they empower your staff to ensure a culture of safety and customer confidence? The risk assessment for, threat, for infectious disease varies by the location. You know, what will work in a hotel room or a hotel lobby would be different from one another as would a convention center. Now, they're the same principles, but you're measuring the volume of air, you're measuring the amount of surfaces you have to clean, you're measuring the amount of people that come through. So for instance, if you had an empty exhibit hall in a convention center, you really don't have to do anything. If you won't put one or two people in there, you don't have to do much. If you put 10,000 people in there and they're going to use the restrooms and if there's tables and chairs, you're gonna do more. If you're going to have the HVAC on, you're gonna do more. And as we talked about a second ago with the air treatment, facilities are now looking into what is gonna be the next air treatment. And that's a work in progress. So for our staff, the work in progress is we're constantly conferring with the people at GBAC, asking them, when we get something new, 
what is the best way to handle it? Um, and this is going to be a work in progress for this next year, maybe two, uh, as the viruses change, as the, uh, uh, you know, we didn't, as the viruses change, as the technology changes, as I mentioned already a couple of times, I think air purification is going to be the next frontier for us to be safe in. That's going to uh, aid, it's going to reduce the amount of time you have to wipe things. It's going to reduce the amount of time you have to spray things. It's going to reduce that cost. And the cost of this air purification, as I'm seeing it now, is really not that much. Okay. Well, thank you. So as the COVID-19 pandemic appears to be coming to an end, and we don't know when that is exactly, but it looks at, it's looking better. What are some activities that you would recommend, Rick, that all cleaning companies should continue to do to ensure a healthy and safe indoor space? Well, Jeff, you said as the, as the COVID-19 pandemic comes to an end. First of all, we don't know that to be true. It's still here. Uh, as more people get vaccinated, uh, it's going to help. But what are some of the variables? Uh, you know, right now we have a number of uh, international flights that are a fraction of what they were a few years ago. Um, countries in Europe and Asia have a fraction of the vaccination that we have. So as the fall approaches and the so to, so to, so to speak, the flu season comes, what is that going to bring? It's unknown. As the uh, vaccine that, we, that we've all taken or most of us have taken for COVID-19, uh, that's still an unknown. Is it good for six months, six years? Do we need a booster shot? Those are all things that, that are still in place. So uh, for us, we're gonna to err to the side of caution and we're going to listen to the scientists. We're gonna continue again with this air purification. We're gonna continue. And I haven't mentioned hand sanitizer. You know, in hotels, exhibit halls, public spaces, you see hand sanitizer everywhere. I think that's here to stay. Regardless of what else happens, you know, two years ago, if you to shake, if you shook hands with somebody and then they put on hand sanitizer, you might be offended. Today, you might expect it. And they might offer you some too. So I think certain things in our culture will, will change for the better. Uh, will hand sanitizer go away? Uh, maybe in three, five, 10 years, but maybe never. But that's certainly here to stay because we know if we keep our hands clean, uh, we keep the air clean, our uh, rate of infection goes way down. Um, are we still going to be wearing masks? Well, you know, it depends on which doctor you ask on what day and what program they're, they're speaking at. So uh, I think in the public venue space, at least for the rest of this year, you're going to be wearing a mask. Um, do, I, do I hope that goes away? Absolutely. I don't think, know of anybody that likes it. Uh, but it's still a work in progress. I mean, just because we're opening up everything now or most places are opening, I think we have to be, we're very optimistic, but a little cautious. Let's not, you know, uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't do everything. I think the convention center should all be open. I think the hotel should be at full capacity. I think every outdoor stadium should absolutely be, should be at full capacity. You know, sunlight and fresh air is the absolute, uh, you know, uh, cure for, for this, uh, for spreading. Uh, but it's going to be a work in progress. I don't think we're out of here yet. I think we've got, a, I think we've made a lot of strides in the past 12 months. The uh, idea of handshaking, that may never come back completely. I see a lot of fist bumps and maybe uh, that's going to change the culture of how we greet people. So let me ask this, you know, thinking about if the pandemic were to end. So let's say that happens, pandemic's over, the stadiums you talked about, the hotels, the flights are full. Uh, how is this accreditation going to continue to help you? You know, everything's good now. So what do you say to that? A couple of things. First of all, we'll talk about the pandemic ending in a second. As far as how does that help us? Long before there was a pandemic, there was the common cold and the common flu. And it's the, the transmission is the exact same way you get COVID-19. Touching something, breathing something, touching something, touching your face. Uh, you know, you didn't get the common cold uh, from anything that you didn't touch or it wasn't airborne. So I think a lot of the protocols that we've had are going to continue. 
I don't think we're going to need the mask. I think, again, if we, if we work with the air and we work with the surfaces and work with our hands, I think that's going to go a long way. Now, as the COVID-19 ending and what the long-term viability of GBAC itself and our relationship, I think it's forever. And I think it's forever because they are giving us real-time information as it occurs. If we'd had this program a few years ago and you had tens of thousands of people set up, remember, GBAC is global. You know, we're thinking myopic within the United States. And the GBAC scientists, if they'd have seen this a couple of years ago, they might have you know, throw the red flag out and say, wait a minute, guys, we've got something happening over here in Asia that we might be mindful of and, you know, and might have helped prevent this. So what is the next COVID-19? Is it COVID-25, 22, 32? What is the next virus that will be coming down the road? And I really think that the GBAC people will help keep an eye on that. I think they will inform all people that they correspond with, their members, for lack of a better term because we get regular communications from them. Um, and I think that the participating with them, uh, participating with, uh, with GBAC on a regular basis, getting their monthly information and more, more uh, timely if needed, I think that's very important. So Rick, in your networking, if another organization like your, yours were to ask you, should we obtain GBAC star accreditation for our company as service accreditation, what would you say? Start today. It's, uh, it's a process. It takes some work. It takes some work on your team's part. And then it takes ongoing work to train and retrain and keeping new information relevant. But it's very worthwhile. I mean, what's the, what's the price of keeping you and your family safe? What's, is that worth anything? Uh, keeping, your, uh, keeping your workers safe, keeping your family safe, keeping the public and the places you service safe. What's that worth? And this, um, you know, it's a bad analogy, but you've got a policeman on the corner and he keeps you safe. Right? Some people don't like it today, but for the mo most people do. So once the pandemic goes away, you see the policeman on the corner and you feel safe. You don't see what's cleansing the air or the surfaces because you just don't see it. But I think we all have to remember where we were just 12 months ago last March when all this started and what happened in April, May, and June. I think we have to re not be afraid of it, but remember it. So should every service company, should every janitorial company be required to be GBAC certified? I would say yes. I think that's, an, it, it's a very small investment of money and it's a little bit of investment of time, but you get a great return on it. Mm -hmm.